Hey everyone, this is Mahav Rizwan from the Thinking Box Podcast. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Kyle and Trey are not here with us to talk about this serious issue because they think I should do this on my own because I know more about the situation more than they do. But um, yeah, I know usually uh, we don't really talk about serious issues. We talk about pop cultures and stuff. But this is an issue that I that really bothered me these past couple of months, and I really wanted to do something about this. Um, if you haven't heard, um, these past couple of years, China has been uh, detaining Uyghur minorities into these concentration camps just for who they are or some, you know, BS reasons. Um, yeah, um, and I'm also honored to bring uh, Martha, is that your name? Right, Martin, yep. Martha? Yes. Who... Um, your mother is in these camps, right? Yes. Um, how you doing? Right. How you doing? Hey, everybody. My name is Martin. And thank you, Mohammed, for giving me this opportunity to be on your podcast. And thanks, no to, thanks to all the viewers who's listening to this. No problem. You know, the, this whole show is just for you. you know, so if you want to take your time, take your time, man. Mm-hmm. Thank all you. right. So, I, so the first question is, uh, what is an Uyghur, if I'm pronouncing it right? Yeah, Uyghur, yep. Yeah. So the Uyghurs are Turkic-speaking Muslims from the Central Asian region. The largest population live in Chinese autonom- autonomous Xinjiang region in the country's northwest. Uyghurs are totally different from Han Chinese. We have different culture and we speak different language. And we also practice different religion. Right. So when it comes to this Han, Han Chinese, do they like, you know, practice Islam or is it just mainly for Uy- Uyghurs? Uh, mainly for, I would say, there is uh, Chinese Muslims, uh, the Hoi, Hoi Chinese Muslims. <laughs> and there are a lot of um, Muslim population in the west part, uh, western part of China. Mm. All right. And that's interesting. Um, when, when it comes to these camps, do you know uh, anything about the scams? Do you know? Yeah, uh, there, there are um, 300 plus suspected facilities in Xinjiang region. The Chinese authorities have detained more than a million of innocent people, including Uyghurs, Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, and other ethnic Turkic Muslims. Um, it, even if you're not you know, a Uyghur, could you still be put into these scams because you have some kind of ties with one or... right right if it doesn't matter if what nationality you are as long as you're up against chinese communist party you'll you'll get locked up in the camp in the prison you know mm. uh do, do you know how one can you know be put in these camps besides having ties with a Uyghur or uh, especially if a chinese person go up to a social inter- uh, internet or social media and tweet about how bad the uh, Chinese government is, they'll have consequences too. Like, as long as you're up against the Chinese government, you're in the deep hole. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do you think um, Western media takes this whole situation too far? Like. Oh, to the mm. point where they'll start spreading fake news in a way, or like fake footage? Well, they are true. The camps do exist. Everything that's happening in Xinjiang are true. Mm. And there's a lot of people who deny the existence of these camps. Um, yeah, they do. Yeah, they're, they're mostly kind of like the Chinese fan, I would say. They, they kind of mm. support whatever the Chinese, Chinese government is doing. Mm. And they, they make it they make it fake. They, they they go up to social medias and post something that's saying the camp mm-hmm. doesn't exist and the the people are not dying and mm-hmm. and even say that the Chinese are re educating those people, you know. Re educating right. it's kinda like an excuse. Right, right. So you live in America, right? Right. Yep, I am in so, Massachusetts. Right. So, do you uh, were you 
born and raised in America or no no I wasn't I was born in Urumqi and raised in Urumqi Xinjiang China so I came to the United States when I was 15. Mm. Um, do you think you feel a lot safer here in America yeah I do feel safe mm. um, I actually know that uh, there are other Uyghurs who are who are living in America right now mm -hmm. and they claim that they still feel uncomfortable and they still think you know, the Chinese Communist Party is always watching them. They feel like right, they're being right. spied on. Um, what I'm thinking is um, I'll definitely be the one one day, you know, uh, that the Chinese government definitely will reach out to me and threaten me. And, you know, just they probably make me uncomfortable in one day in the future because I just started talking. I just started, like, testifying about my mother's situation. Mm -hmm. And... They will. They will definitely reach out to me and give me problems, you know? Okay. You, you know what you're going to go up against in a way? What is it? What was that? You, you, you think you're going to go, uh, you know what you're going to go up against? Yes. All right. Nope. Um, for your mother, um, what do you think is the cause of her being put into these camps? Because you said so, your mother's in these camps. Right. So um, she, my mother came to the United States to visit me twice in 2016 and 17. And mm -hmm. she returned to China in September 2017. And in January 2018, Chinese authority took my mom. And I want to know mm -hmm. why, but I'm pretty sure it's because she came to the United, United States to visit me and she, she did travel abroad. I went to uh, Western countries and um, right. different part of the world. All right. Um, the, uh, is it just your mother or do you have any other family members who um, are in scams? Yes, my mother was the first one. And then recently I just found out that my uncle and my cousin, they were both uh, in the camps. Mm -hmm. They're, they're uh, both in the camps, my cousin and my uncle. And they're both businessmen. Mm. Um, do you have any like siblings or? You know? No, no, I don't. Just my mother from my family, um, okay. and my uncle and my cousin. All right. Uh, do Do you plan on testifying? Yes, um, I will. I will. I just have to gather more information about my uncle and my cousin. You know. Mm. Um. Is uh. Is there something we should know about these camps? Uh, yeah, definitely. So, uh, torture, mistreatment, and unfair trials are happening. Um, innocent Uyghurs, Kazakhs, Kyrgyz people are dying in these camps. It's true. Like, I don't know why people are still not doing something about it. Well, there is people doing it, but not a lot of people knows about the situation, you know. All right. Um, uh, uh, I'm gonna ask you like some of these treatments I've heard, and you can mm -hmm. tell me if it's true or not. Is it true that women are being raped and sterilized and oh, have yes. their nails cut off? Yep, definitely. Because there are people who escaped China and went to different countries, and they did report about the issues, saying mm -hmm. like even some women did experience the crazy stuff that's happening in the camps and it's, yeah. it's it's really too sad those interview it it's really sad to see those interviews you know mm. I, just, I just can't keep watching those videos it's really sad yeah i know um if you don't know who she is you know marigold person yes i have heard about her um she was actually in this camps three times right um i think she, the third time she mm -hmm. got uh came here uh, she had her kids, you know, she mm -hmm. was entering the, uh, China, but then they took her kids away and then, right. you know, they, they tortured her and they put her back in this camp for the third time. And she, um, I think by the, uh, by the Egyptian government, they mm -hmm. had to, they had to bail her out. So, and then, right. And I remember, I think one of her, one of her kid was killed in the camp or by the Chinese authority, I think. Yeah, her not, oldest. Yeah, her oldest yeah. kid was um, right. killed. Right, she's, she's she's one of the survivor. She's the lucky one. 
Yeah, and like Whatever. I heard that she yeah. sterilized and like they did something to her kids where they put something in their necks. Um, I know, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, do you think if China were to like publicly talk about these camps, which will never happen, do you think either way they'll still make some like fake BS lies? Oh, they will definitely. Will. They, that's what they're good at, man. Chinese governments are really good at lying. You mm-hmm. know, they're really good at it. Um, I actually know uh, Mardan Gopper, if I'm pronouncing his name right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He was in these camps, and there was footage of him actually in these camps. Um, supposedly, I don't know if it's true or not, but it, apparently the reason why he was in these camps was because um, he was some kind of like, he was doing drugs. <laughs> like, it didn't look like BS. he was doing drugs. I know, I know. BS, BS, man. Totally yeah, BS, yeah. you know. Um, I, I want to go back to uh, um, when you said that you were raised in, um, more than raised in, uh, I forgot. Uh, yep. 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 And that's in Xinjiang, China, right? Right. Um, so were there any mosques in the... Yes, the, there uh, were mosques. There were mosques when I was growing up. And nowadays, most of the mosques got destroyed. And I don't think there are a lot of mosques left. Probably none, I would say. I haven't been back myself, so I can't really answer this question, you know. But I have heard that I have seen those videos that the mosques are being destroyed. Mm-hmm. Um, was it true that you couldn't really have the Quran with you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, back in the days when I was growing up, but most of the families are always hiding the Qurans, you know. Mm-hmm. They're not really out in public. They're always hiding the Qurans. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, c- okay, because I wanted to like, and this is from what I heard. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can, you know, if you want to debunk these, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't true that like Han Chinese men would, you know, just come into your house and just stay there. Yes, and especially I would say in the village, uh, in the um, in the villages. I would say I I seen those videos too, like a mm-hmm. the Uyghur woman and the kid sleeping on the other side of the bed, and yeah, I, I saw mean, that. You, you know, it's 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 so hard to see those videos, man. Where the dead, mm-hmm. where the dead is in the camps. Definitely. Yeah. The the fathers, most of the family's fathers are in the camps and then the Chinese government bring a Chinese guy into their family. And like what the hell, man? Had, uh, What's going on in this world? And yeah, do they also do like forced marriage? Yes, forced marriage, yes. Uh it, that that's that's public. That's out in the public. Even on the um the propaganda news saying in china is saying that if you're married to a, if, if a Uyghur girl married to a han chinese guy and then their kids will get a lot of benefits comparing to other minorities right they get, so they get they like good benefits when they're growing up you know right so how would we identify han chinese to a no Uyghur? oh we we Uyghurs and chinese we totally look different I mean, I'm talking about like yeah. the Han Chinese. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? You, you know, you said that Han Chinese would, you know, uh, be marrying women, like Uyghur mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. So is there any trait that makes them look different than an Uyghur? Or like is like a, by physical appearance or? Uh, physical appearance and the language is totally different. And right. and the the way of life is different, I would say. And mm-hmm. the, f- the food that we ate is different. It's just mm-hmm. totally different than Han Chinese. All right. So is it just in Xinjiang or is it just around China just or, you know, any of that stuff? Uh, what do you mean by that question? Like, what I mean by, by that is, like, are there also, like, other Uyghurs around China besides Xinjiang? Are also being oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there are um, Uyghur people population in the in those Chinese cities like mm. Beijing, Shanghai, those big big cities. Right. So I, I want to go back to your uncle and your mm-hmm. cousin because mm-hmm. y- you said that they were from Kazakhstan. 
Uh, no, they they do they do business in Kazakhstan and in the Middle Eastern countries. Right. So does China have like really you know have some kind of ties with Kazakhstan? Uh, yes. No? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. They they do have ties with Middle Eastern countries like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. I'm not like hundred percent sure with with uh, which country they have ties with, mm. but I'm pretty sure there is there are countries that that have ties with China. Yeah, I know um, Pakistan. Yeah, um, Pakistan, yep. Yeah, no, they can't really, I know some of these Middle Eastern countries can't really speak up against them because then they'll no. just get in big trouble. Yeah, because they'll they'll help you. I mean, the local government will help you to deport, will, will help the Chinese government to deport Uyghurs back into China, you know. Right, right. Yeah. Um, is, uh, is there anything else we should know? Like, how the Xinjiang was like growing up, or um, what, what we should know, basically, or you know, if you want to debunk anything that's not true, you know, any um, of that. Um, so one of the uh, one of the thing I want to say that when I was growing up, you could see a lot of people, a lot of Uyghur population on the streets, you know. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, I've seen those videos, and there isn't a lot of people on the streets anymore in those big cities like Rimchi, where I came from. Uh, the, the streets became empty. So you can see by that video that a lot of people was taken away by the Chinese government to the concentration camp. Yeah. Are we talking about uh, the Vice video? Yeah, Vice? Vice, yeah, there was the, yeah, there was one with Vice and different, different medias. Yeah, I know. Um, it's empty. It, it wasn't like this when I was growing up. You know, it was like packed. Streets were packed. Like where, wherever they went, especially there was a there is a a big mosque in Kashgar. Mm. And the mosque used to be that that there, it's like um the in front of the mosque there's a big square like um like a ground like a play yard. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. So you have tourists come and take a picture, and there was camels and like different different stuff like shops everything you know back in the days it was packed when i was growing up but now it's like empty dead dead streets it's like a ghost town where um, the where the people went you know yeah i know uh i actually like saw a bunch of like xinjiang vlogs mm-hmm. and i i don't want to you know be mean you know i don't want to you know deground you yep. um but I definitely see a lot of people. They seem very fine, you know. Yes, they they people. they're acting, totally acting. like hundred percent acting. They're acting. Is it because the, maybe the vlogger? Yes, just has the, vlogger, the camera. Yes, the vloggers are. Well, there are people speaking the truth, but there are there are people speaking the fake uh, news, you know. So right. so so it, because of the camera, just in yes. front of them, they don't want yep. to say anything. Yeah. Well, some people are afraid to afraid to say something, you know. But some people are acting. They're acting that that nothing is happening in Xinjiang and everything looks normal and they're totally 100% they're acting. All right. They're faking um, everything. All right. Uh do you, uh would you would have something like this happen to you when you were growing up over there? Uh what do you mean by that? Like back in the day? Like- yeah, like did someone like with a camera just stopped you and were like, "Hey." Oh, it wasn't. No, I haven't. I have never experienced that in my childhood. No. Nope. All right. Um. This is going to be a very uh, gut wrenching question. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to take your time, mm-hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. Um, if you had the chance to see your mother again, mm-hmm. what would you say to her? Mm, I would say my love for you is limitless and priceless. I love you, mom, and I will not lose you again. Right. Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it, this is a very tough subject, I can imagine, for you. It's sad, man. It's like I have to go through this every day of my life. I wake up to this reality, you know, every day. Mm. Do you plan on like you know starting a protest? You know. Oh yeah, I got I I have some plans. I have some plans. Yep. 
I'm right, still cool. working on it. Right, and for my final, final question, mm -hmm. how do, what do you think us viewers and someone like me, what should we do to really spread the word out and spread awareness? Okay. Um, for the viewers, um, please help me to share my story and my video in Twitter. Um, there are more, more, more than a million of innocent people are suffering in the camps, including my mother. And they can also boycott Chinese goods. That's another thing. You know, the and spread, rally. Yeah, and spread, and spread the news and with the people around them, you know. Right. With okay. their families, with their friends. Yep. All right. And I, I think that's it for you. I know this was a very short and simple interview, but I, I right. think we I think we got the job done. Yep, yeah, we got everything in there. Thank you. No problem. Yep. All right, guys. I this route this will wrap up for today. Hopefully this weekend I can go back to talking about pop culture. But I'm gonna say this right now. Stuff like this is gonna happen. I'm definitely gonna, you know, touch on world issue subjects, um, bring people on the show and just talk about it. Um, because this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast, just to have people like you share your story. All right. I, I think that will wrap up for today. Thank you guys for watching or uh, listening. Uh, please share this video, share a story, do what he's asking you to do. Until then, guys, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.